A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive. This is part 22. Looking at the BSP caps and dies that I bought to make blanking plugs for engines of this size. Then I found some stainless steel ready-made ones online. In order to perform the hydraulic test on the boiler, the threads in the boiler for the wet header were changed from 2BA to M5 type. So I drilled out the holes in the wet header to 5mm and using some M5 stainless steel bolts and washers, everything worked out OK. As you can probably tell by my voice, I'm not 100%. I have a very bad cold, thankfully not COVID-19. And that is why I've been concentrating on working in the other workshop which is built onto the house, because that's actually warm. In my workshop I have an air conditioning unit, but to be honest it's not very good when I run it as a heater. It warms the workshop but it doesn't heat it properly. And just for the record, I will not be replacing my oil-fired central heating unit with a heat pump anytime soon. The central heating is for the house only, not the workshop. Which was the reason that I had this extension built. It's nice and warm in here. Two packages arrived in the post, and in one of them were two pieces of metal. Some hexagon phosphor bronze, and a piece of round phosphor bronze bar. I was going to use this material to make some blanking plugs for the boiler. But as I mentioned in the introduction, after I bought this metal, I saw some ready-made blanking plugs online. So the metal's a bit surplus now, it will go into my stock. Irrespective of the job that I'm doing, I did realise that I was short of BSP taps and dies. So I phoned RDG Tools and ordered some. This is a quarter by 19 threads per inch BSP die. And as you can see, it's a very good quality high-speed steel die. In this particular die, there isn't a slot, so it's not adjustable. This is a 3 8 by 19 BSP die, and this is carbon steel. And as you can see, this has a slot in it, so you can adjust the die. I also bought a carbon steel version of the quarter by 19 BSP one too, because sometimes... I do like to adjust these dies to get a very accurate thread. It will be interesting to compare the performance of the two dies. I can hear the experts thinking, well you don't want to buy carbon steel stuff because it's absolutely rubbish. And to make it worse, here's another one. This is a half inch by 14 threads per inch BSP die. Once again, even though it's made from carbon steel, it's still adjustable. I have some carbon steel taps and dies, mainly in ME and BA sizes. And some of these I've had for 45 years or more, and the carbon steel, and they work fine. So what's this all about? Well, it's quite simple. If you are in industry, you need to use high-speed steel. It's a lot stronger, and it wears better. But if you're building small steam engines on a part-time basis in your shed, you can actually get perfectly good service and performance from carbon steel dies. I don't wish to enter into any conversations with experts about this. I'm only stating how it's worked out in my life. Here's everything together. The bronze that is of the easy machining type and the taps and dies ready to take up to the workshop. But for the moment, I'm in my second workshop in the extension at the side of the house that I recently had built. It's below zero outside, but it's nice and warm in here. Another package arrived. And in this one were the BSP plugs. Two quarter inch BSP and one three eighths of an inch BSP. Just in case you don't know, BSP stands for British Standard Pipe. All good things must come to an end, so now I'm back in the workshop. It's not exactly freezing, but it's not warm either. And here's the story so far. The boiler arrived back from being tested and it sat on the frames. By using my late father's really good crowbar, I moved the boiler rearward. And this allowed me to get to the front tube plate. This part of the boiler, which supplies the wet steam to the cylinders, had to be blanked off during the hydraulic test. And it was at this point of the proceedings that someone decided to re-thread the holes M5 because they didn't have any 2BA bolts. Ironically, I have loads of those. Anyway, it was too late, the holes were re-threaded M5, 
and the bolts were replaced by M5 Allen caphead bolts. As I was removing the three Allen caphead bolts, I soon found out that they were very short. And to mount the wet header of this physical size, these are no good at all. And here you can see what I mean. I need some much longer bolts. They need to be 35mm long. That's just the shank of the bolt, not including the head. Even though stainless steel isn't as strong as mild steel, it doesn't rust. So I'm going to try and find some stainless steel bolts to hold the wet header to the boiler. Most copper boilers, where they need a fixing, have bushes fitted into the boiler to take the fixing which does not go through into the water space. That is not the case with this steel boiler. I have one of those tool chests that mechanics use and one of the drawers is filled entirely with stainless steel bolts of various sizes. I'm really hoping that I can find three matching M5 stainless steel bolts in there. I found one and it's looking good. In case you're wondering why I'm using a magnet, this stainless steel is non-magnetic. For this job, I much prefer a hexagon bolt, and I'm definitely not going to use the dome-headed Allen head type, like the one in the picture. I'm just checking the size, and it's 5mm, and coincidentally it screws into a 5mm nut. The holes in the wet header were 3 16 of an inch diameter, which is clearance size for 2BA. I've drilled out all three of the holes using a 5mm drill. Now I'm blowing away every bit of the swarf from both the pipes and the wet header itself. Here you can clearly see the silicone o-ring that makes a seal between the wet header and the boiler tube plate. I think the stainless steel bolts should be okay because they really don't need torquing up. They certainly don't need to be high tensile. Almost unbelievably I found three, and I mean just three, matching bolts that were perfect for the job in my box of stainless steel bolts. First of all I fitted stainless steel washers to them and here by using a box spanner I'm tightening the wet header onto the tube plate. This will compress the silicone o-ring seal against the tube plate and it shouldn't leak. In this clip I'm using a screwdriver as a tommy bar to thoroughly tighten the bolts. The usual warning, when working on miniature things, don't over tighten the bolts. The bolts need to apply just enough pressure to hold the parts together. Over tightening bolts will damage the thread and the worst case scenario is it may shear the bolt off. This is something I don't do very often, I'm winding PTFE tape around a blanking plug. Why am I using PTFE tape and not Loctite 542? Mainly because it seems to be the convention on plugs of this type. And if you re-watch the last clip, you will see that I'm winding the tape onto the part from underneath at the back. This means as I tighten the blanking plug into the hole, it's going to tighten the PTFE tape, not try and wind it off in the opposite direction. That's my logic anyway. I use the same principle when fitting graphited yarn into stuffing glands that use a threaded gland cover. That way as you tighten the gland nut, it doesn't unravel the yarn. Now it's time once again to use my late father's crowbar to lift the back of the boiler and sit it on a stout piece of wood. This allows me access to the 3 8 BSP plug that's in the front of the firebox. What are these plugs for, you may be thinking? Well, they're called washout plugs and allow you to literally wash out the boiler from time to time. This is in quite an inaccessible place. With the boiler lifted, it's quite straightforward. Once the boiler is fitted in the correct position, this will be much more difficult to get at. And that is it. In this clip, I'm very carefully lowering the position of the boiler and in the next episode, I'll fit it into the smoke box. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.